Hey YouTube, Jason here with Day Train Fearless. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and make sure you check out my website, daytrainfearless.com, where you could sign up for my S&P EMA Futures weekly trade zones that are support and resistance levels. And it's only $50 for a lifetime subscription. So go check it out. But as always, Let's jump right into it. So in this video, we're going to actually talk about um, how to analyze a trade to sell puts on, right? Um, and the reason why we would want to sell puts is because this is a stock we may want to actually purchase. So if you don't understand what selling puts are or why you would do it, well, Buckle up because this is uh, what you're going to learn in this video. So the first thing that we want to do is this. We want to find a potential candidate uh, to sell a stock on, okay? So right now, we're looking at JP Morgan. Um, and again, this is educational purposes. The trade's probably over uh, by the time you see this. But uh, this is what the trade is going to be um, if it comes down of what I would potentially do. Again, none of this is trade advice. Um, I'm just some dude on uh, YouTube, so it's all educational purposes. So, the, so we find JP Morgan. I kind of really like it's in a nice clean up trend, right? Making lower highs, lower lows. So we're just in a pullback of a bigger uptrend. Okay. That's the way I look at it. So the first thing I'll do is kind of maybe come over here. And I'm going to just try and find what matches the most, right? Where is the most hits on a trend, right? Well, this trend line. So this one, I kind of like probably from here to here and look at this, right? Close enough, touch, touch, reverse. So then I'm going to duplicate this, okay? And we're going to bring it down to, we'll say, down to this level right here, okay? Because this is a pivot right here. So think of it this way. One, two, right? Two pivots here, one down here. I could I could have brought it here, but with the gap, I want to give it a little more room just because it's been such a big, massive move to the upside. Then we have a nice reversal, abandoned baby uh candlestick pattern and I see that we're starting to fall down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to this where on my market profile is the next major support level where we well we actually have a low volume node right here which is a 142 which is also the gap fill and also this previous high so I know 142 is kind of a good number to just remember that my next level is the 137 level which is kind of the base of all this trading right here but it's also the high volume node over here also if price did come down okay as time goes we would fall right into this level we'll say so let's say it's like a candle here a candle here here so on right we would end up at the lower end of the trend line. So X marks the spot. So I know this is a level where I like that 37 level where I believe price would find support in multiple places, right? High volume node, the base right here, all these things. So with all that being said, I then come over here and I want to draw my fibs. So I kind of see a base, all this price action right here. I'll highlight it real quick, okay? All of this is kind of a base of a leg. So if we get here to this level right here, which is around the 146 level, I want to draw a FIB extension from high to low and then all the way back. And I want to see what actually lines up with all these levels. Well, look at how perfect this pattern is. We have the 127 previous high. We have the 1618 
high volume node. And then we have the 200%, which is the low of this gap. Also, all this move right here. So that get, leaves us around 131. So we're kind of doing all this. So what put would we want to sell on all this, right? Well, I know 142 is probably my first level of support. My second level would be the 137. My third is the 131. Uh, Just remember that, okay? What I would do is, I, and this is where it's really hard, but you have to be patient. You have to wait for trades to play out. Now, when we get to the 146, is there a trade? Yeah, because we might actually just come to this 146 and then do uh do a double bottom, right? Just based off of this level. So price might come down because it's already fallen from 161 all the way to 146. So what I might do is I might go, hey, if it gets here, maybe we get a bounce. So now we have to add 147. So let's go over here and let's go over to the put, okay? Hold on. Let me, uh, okay. So, so now we're up here, okay? JP Morgan. Now, if we get to 146, I'm probably going to look for like a week out, okay? The 146 level right here. Okay, I see that I could sell these with nine days out. Now, the problem is we're at 149. We need to be at 146, right? So when we're at 146, let's just move up three points, okay? What puts would I want to sell? Well, I probably want to sell maybe the 142 puts. But remember, let's just go because we're $3 away right now from the 146 level, right? So we would just move all these numbers up three, three points to see how much premium we would be able to collect, right? If there was still nine days, of, let's say it's a perfect world, right? So I'd go one, two, three. I'd be able to sell, when we're at 146, I'd be able to sell the 143 puts for probably about a dollar, We'll say a dollar ten. Okay. Hey, I like that. That's not bad. If it gets the bounce, all that premium is gonna get sucked out. Also, your time decay is really gonna start kind of ticking off because you only have a few a uh, few days left in the trade. But what I would rather do is I'd rather come out with that same nine day, give myself a little more room. Okay, not. It all depends on your risk profile, but I'd rather give it a little more room. And I would probably look to sell the 138s or the 137s. Now, remember, when we're lower, implied volatilities can go up. This will be about $3 lower. So if we're at one 143, okay, or sorry, uh, 146, okay, I would probably want to sell the 137s and we'll move this up one two three i could collect about 38 cents for nine days i like that trade it gives me a big enough cushion because if we're 146 i still have essentially nine dollars plus about 40 well 38 cents of Risk, so about $9.48 over the next nine days if I am not wrong on the trade. So I really like that trade. Now, if we got there, maybe you go out and you want to collect more, maybe we would go out to the weekly, or sorry, the uh, monthly contract, right? We have 24 days. And if we're at 146, okay, I might sit there and go, hey, let's sell the 130. Uh, puts, but I'd be able to probably collect about 70 cents, give or take for, for a couple of weeks out. And that's the 130. Remember on the chart, the 131 is the 200% move of this entire leg, right? 
I really like this level because it's a gap fill. There's all these things there. And that is worst case scenario in my opinion, right? So that's why I would probably look on the monthly to sell the 130 if we drop another three or four dollars to the downside i would probably look on the monthly to sell this maybe with a uh, nine days left i would probably look to sell the 1618 because if it does i know i have a support level here the gap fill the prior high right and then if it kept going i still have a little bit more room of the high volume node to be correct so i hope that helps you guys remember selling puts is just like me having a order in okay and here's the easiest way of thinking about it right so let's say let's change this let's go 100 shares Okay, and let's say we're right here, and if I want to get long JP Morgan at 137 over the next nine days, I could scroll down. Okay, I could come over here, and I could say, hey, where's 137? Okay, right here, I put an order in to buy 137. Well, if price never comes down i never get filled i never make any money because what happens if price comes here and then bounces well i miss the entire trade but by selling the put okay and let's say i sell that 137 price never comes down but i'm able to collect maybe 50 cents for the next 20 days 25 days while i have it's the same as me putting an order in to buy a 137, right? I'm just getting paid a premium of about, we'll say 70 cents to be able to wait until until price gets there or whatever that number is. So um, I hope that helps uh, of how to analyze and sell puts. Um, if you guys like this video and you want to see more of them, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the like uh, button. And I will also um, start to make a few more of these videos for you all. But until next time, thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon.